Hello and welcome back to Supply Chain Management. In the last lecture, you went through a step-by-step -step video on how to model a problem in Excel. You, we ended up getting a solution for an aggregate plan where we could look at the production plan, we could look at the inventory, how many, what the workforce plan was, and we showed how uh, the graphs looked like on Excel, right? And then we also showed the workforce plan, right? The question, and here are the results. We calculated the total cost, the seasonal inventory, which is the average inventory and average flow time. So I guess the question now is we want to look at a series of what we call as what if analysis. And this is very common when you are presenting data to management the solutions. Questions would come like, what if this scenario happened? How would it affect your solution, right? So let's look at the first what if scenario. Our original hiring costs were $300, but now we're looking at lower hiring costs and lower layoff costs. So we go from $300 per worker to about $50 per worker. And we've got to remodel this problem in Excel. So remember this Excel spreadsheet from the last problem. And so what we are going to do is to copy this, create a copy of this Excel spreadsheet. Now you have to copy, remember to copy the entire sheet rather than copying the values here because when you copy the values the solver uh, details will not be copied over however here we are going to do low hire and layoff costs let's kind of take a look at it and now we just change this to 50 and we are going to rerun the model now this is the advantage of linking everything here directly here so that you can change it in one spot and it automatically changes everywhere. If you had put 50 bucks here, you'd have to change it in six different spots and again, six different spots here. So let's rerun the model. And immediately you see when you have lower hiring and layoff costs, the company then uh, changes the way it does its production. Here is your demand, it goes up and your production tries to match how your demand goes up and you don't keep that much inventory and here you constantly are hiring and firing people, right? And so you get your new total cost and seasonal revenue. And that's it from Excel. Once you do the first part, it's just easy to do a whole bunch of what if analysis. So let's analyze the solution. As we talked about here, um, this is the solution. We have our new production schedule right around here. We talk about how what the inventory is going to be, the workforce plan here, and you have your um, different solutions. Here is the inventory, no stock out, no sub, very little subcontracting, and here the production and demand almost follow each other. And here we have your workforce plan, you can fire people, hire people, because the cost is cheap. Now, remember when you're calculating the cost of hiring and cost of laying off, if you don't calculate them properly, the computer is going to think that it's really cheap. So here it is 50 bucks, but maybe you haven't ca calculated the cost of training these new people who are hired, these 42 new people, to be as productive. So you have to be very careful when you plan the cost of, when you're calculating the cost of hiring and laying off. So here are the results, new total costs. We are presenting that. And let's look at the comparison. So the comparison is we ended up with um, less, so we ended up with um, less cost. We have our seasonal inventory went up. Your average flow time went up. Workforce was unstable, fluctuated between 45 to 88. Uh, there's no change in subcontracting. And then stock out 
uh, was much less in the second plan. So it was overall cheaper because you were able to save money from um, basically varying your workforce. The next model is going to look at, we're going to look at our demand and the fact that what is the impact if our demand kind of peaks up. So instead of it being a little bit more closer to each other, we are kind of, the January is really low, and then it starts shooting up in February, March, and April before dropping dramatically in May and June. So high variability in your demand forecast, and we want to see how that will impact our aggregate plan. So now we are going to look at when this demand shoots up dramatically. So let's go back to our original um, our original model. We're going to copy it, create a copy, right? And then um, high variability. And let's go ahead and take a look at what the we had. January was going to be 1,000. February was 3,000, March was 3,800, May was 4,800, sorry, April was 4,800, June was 2,000, and this was 1,400. Now you'll notice as I change, things change directly here, and that's it. And then you can now run this model and get your report now. So with pretty high cost of layoff and training, you end up with a flat production. Your uh, you don't your workforce is at 64, and then you use your inventory, and there is more stock out than previous. So let's do a comparison with the previous model. So let's look at the solution. We've got the solution here, and let's start looking at the production plan visually. Inventory goes down. Stock out kind of goes up, production is flat, and demand shoots up and then goes down. Here is your workforce plan. And now let's, here are the final results. Total cost is 433,000. Average inventory, you have about 1,051 units on average. Uh, and floor time, it takes about 0.39 months for a, um, units to go through your inventory. So comparison, the original one had your total cost of 422,000 and this one has 433,000. Again, more seasonal inventory, higher flow time, workforce that's steady at 64, you're subcontracting more units and you have more stock out. Well, this makes sense, doesn't it? Because when you have higher variability demand is shooting up from really low to very high you are going to carry more inventory you are uh, you're going to have more subcontracting you're possibly going to have more stock out so it makes sense but it's important for you when you're making this presentation and talking with you have to compare it and talk about why this is happening So then we get the next question is, how do we deal with forecasting error? Remember, we are optimizing our aggregate plan, specifically uh, with the respect to the forecast. So we really don't know how much demand we're gonna have. And remember, all forecasts have an error. So how do we handle that forecasting error? We handle that forecasting error by using safety inventory. We build and carry extra inventory in the form of safety inventory, and we'll talk about that uh, very soon. Uh, we also look at how to build safety capacity. Use overtime as a form of safety capacity. Carry extra workforce permanently as a form of safety capacity. Use subcontractors as a form of safety capacity. Uh, purchase capacity or products from open or spark markets as a form of safety capacity. This is going to be very useful, especially when you do your project, because a lot of companies are not going to kind of trust the forecast. They all understand that forecasts have an error, okay? 
So let's look at how we are going to implement this in Excel. Safety inventory, safety capacity, how do we carry extra workforce using subcontracting, all this and other constraints. So we're going to focus on doing a bunch of constraints on Excel. So let's look at the first one. How do we put safety inventory? So let's assume that we need safety inventory and let's say this is your demand. And when you calculate your demand, you have an MAD, right? So remember that 1.25 times your MAD is your standard deviation, is um, your standard deviation. Now remember, what, what is standard deviation? That is your sigma, right? Remember when we, people talk about six sigma, they're talking about six standard deviations of A. So if you want to use that, you can do three sigma, you can look at uh, essentially number of standard deviations and put that as your safety inventory. So all you have to do then is to select this inventory and add a constraint to say this inventory has to be greater than whatever that value, it could be 4,000 units, it could be, and if, if, you, if it is a certain percentage of your demand, then you just kind of go, let's assume that this is your safety inventory. You want 50% of your demand to be your safety inventory. So you just copy this down and you can create a constraint which says these values should be greater than or equal to these values, right? And click OK and then run the model. OK, so that is for your safety inventory. Next, we talked about safety capacity, which is essentially our extra in this particular case that is either using um, essentially using your work workers or some minimum amount of overtime. So you could kind of say you have to have 80 workers. You can have more than 80 workers, but you have to have at least 80 workers. Right. This gives you that extra workforce permanently as a form of safety capacity if you need to have a surge in your um, in your production that you need to produce more. So then you just select this and you can say this add a constraint is greater than or equal to 80 here and click OK. All right. So that will take care of this extra um, um, uh, extra. Uh, you could say you always have to buy so much from your uh, subcontractors so you can kind of ensure that your subcontractors is greater than or equal to 20. Let's say every month you have to buy 20 units. Again, you put that as a constraint and say this is greater than or equal to 20. Um, you can ensure you will have no stock out, right? And that's an option by ensuring you add a constraint saying this is equal to zero, right? Equal to zero. And that will give you no stock out. So it is important that you be able to do these constraints. Here is another example of a constraint. Let's assume that you have um, 60 permanent workers who you cannot fire. And then you have about 20 part-time workers who you can fire or hire right? You can hire or fire about 20 workers. So, um, or instead of hiring and firing, this laying off is nothing but transferring them to another division or keeping them idle or something like that. That is, you're transferring them from your division to another division, and then you can get them back. They have a pool of workers you can always kind of rotate in and out, right? And if you have that, then hiring and firing, you can kind of say, is actually less than or equal to 20, right? And this here, this workforce here will always be greater than or equal to 60. So it's, again, like I said, it's very important that you're able to manage these constraints. With this, we finish the Excel part. Now we go back to aggregate plan to finish up the rest. Uh, and let's go back to the PowerPoint to finish up the rest of the aggregate plan lecture. So now that you have your aggregate plan, what are you going to do next? Well, now once with your aggregate plan, you can create a master production schedule. And so here is an example where we're going to create a rough master production schedule. 
Uh, and here we have our workforces given. Here's a production. Uh, and this now is in aggregate units. Remember that product, we had a number of product categories. So now we have to disaggregate or breaking it up into number of pieces. So the first step is to divide the production across the six families. Um, and so use the ratio of expected sales. So family A was 10% of sales. So it's going to be about 256 units, right? Next step is to identify the number of planned batches for each family. So planned production quantity divided by average base size and then round down the answer. So family A was 256 and average batch size was 50. So this comes to 5.12, which essentially allows you to have five setups, right? So this is five times you're going to produce that batches of 50. So now we calculate the setup time, which is uh, and production time for the planned number of batches. The setup time would be setup time per batch multiplied by the number of setups and production time is going to be production time multiplied by production quantity. And so here we have the total setup time is 209, total production nut time is 10,022, which gives us our total planned time of 10,231 hours. And once we disaggregate it, here, this was the data, right? We have our rough master production schedule for the disaggregated plan, right? So we have all the data given. Here's the average batch size. Here's the production time per unit, production quantity, which is their number of setups, the setup time in hours, and the production time in hours. Before we finish aggregate plan, let's talk a little bit about the role of information technology. Information technology allows you to handle large problems and complex problems uh, through either nonlinear optimization or linear approximation. So this ability to interact with other core IT systems such as inventory management and sourcing becomes very critical uh, when doing an aggregate plan. So information technology uh, without that, it would be difficult to do aggregate plans. Now, let's talk about implementing it in real practice. The first thing we talk about is you got to think beyond the enterprise to the entire supply chain. You've got to make flexible plans because forecasts are always inaccurate. And finally, you have to update or rerun the aggregate plan as new data emerges. And then finally, you use aggregate plan as a capacity utilization, uh, as capacity use, utilization increases. So in summary, we looked at the aggregate plan and we understood the importance of aggregate planning in supply chain activity. We described the information needed to produce an aggregate plan. We explained the basic trade-offs to consider when creating an aggregate plan. And then we formulated and solved an aggregate plan in Excel. Thank you for listening. And after this, we go to the next chapter, which is sales and operations planning.